So, for the second question, Jerome Tissier asked, in Amdahl's law, are the serialization delays mostly due to hardware limitations, e.g. time to read memory or network latency, or are not fully optimized software, or both? Now, that's an excellent question. And hopefully, um, the reason I introduced the traffic model and asked you to think about it both in principle and in practice, how you might implement it in, in um, shared variables and in message passing, was exactly to illustrate this kind of point. So I'll go from the, the end first. Yes, not fully optimized software can show up as a serial overhead in Amdahl's law. And if we take the traffic model, the classic example might be I.O. I haven't actually talked about how you read in the data. And so if you use a naive solution for reading in the data, you might nominate a boss uh, process, a boss process, to read in the data from disk. And that might take quite a long time because I.O. is quite slow. And then it might broadcast it to all the other um, processes. And during that process, the other processes are idle. So you have a piece of calculation, and well, it's not a calculation, this, in this case, um, I.O., reading and writing data, which is serial. Um, in Amdahl's law, the most important point about, about the overhead is it's Amdahl's law calls a serial component something which can't be parallelized. And that is true in this case, sorry, something that isn't parallelized. In that simple I.O. strategy, we haven't parallelized the I.O. We've just nominated one boss process. But in fact, in Amdahl's law, what's really important is, is the overheads which don't get faster as you add more processes. But in this case, it is a genuine, genuine serial overhead. So that would be a classic example of a serial overhead which causes a program not to scale. The more processes you use, the faster your calculation goes, but um, its I.O. stays as a fixed overhead and doesn't, doesn't get any faster. So that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's not fully optimized software. And what you would do there, if you wanted to improve that, was to do parallel I.O., which we haven't covered, but it is possible to do parallel I.O., to have all the processes reading and writing to a parallel file system at once. However, even if we imagine we, we, we got rid of that overhead, we, um, we, we had nice parallel I.O. which scaled, we would look at our program, we say, well, it's completely parallelized. We have everyone doing local computation on their local road and then, and then, then doing halo swapping to exchange data each iteration. But as you point out there, there is an overhead to that. And that is the network latency. And as we maybe discussed on something like Archer, that is, on a modern supercomputer, that overhead is of the order of a few microseconds um, for, 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 for a very small message. And the important point about that is that overhead doesn't get smaller as you add more processes. No matter how many processes you have, um, with, no matter what size of piece of road you have, you have to exchange boundary data. So that, that um, serialization overhead turns up from network latency. Now in practice, the network latency often isn't so much a hardware thing as a software thing. I mean, MPI has lots of layers in it and there's some overhead. So it's a combination of hardware and software overheads. But, but it is, as, as, the, as the, um, Jerome points out, it's a network latency, it's an overhead to sending a message. It, it's a delay that you can't avoid paying. And so in that case, there's nothing you can do. You can't opt, well, you can try, but there's some level beyond which you can't more optimize your software anymore. And so the way to get around that, the way to make your program uh, better or, or scale better is, is to use Gustafsson's law and just to solve larger problems. So although you have this fixed overhead, this network latency of sending and, and receiving data, because you have larger problems, it becomes relatively less important because the calcula calculation overhead is so much higher. You're right that reading and writing memory is, is a very, um, is a limiting factor to parallel performance, but it doesn't show up in Amdahl's law. All it really does is the way processes work, they're trying to do calculations and they're reading and writing data at the same time. And so, in fact, all that shows up as is, is your peak performance doesn't look as fast as it as you thought it would be. And so you thought you had a, a two or three gigaflop processor and it operates at, you know, 20% of that, 50% of that, because actually it has to read and write data. So it is a very important limiting factor to parallel performance, but it doesn't show up as this, this fixed overhead. So just to recap, you're absolutely right. There are two classic um, um, sources of fixed or, or serial overhead, as we would see in Amdahl's law, one is not fully optimized software, and I.O. is a classic example of that, and the other one is network latency, the unavoidable delay, the overhead of sending, receiving any message between pairs of processes. So I, I hope there, one of the reasons I introduced the traffic model, although it's very, very simple, 
uh, people asking quite deep questions like this, hopefully we can use the traffic model to, to explore those. And the issues you might get in a, in a much larger simulation, like weather forecasting, um, the kinds of things we'll look at in, 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 um, in week five when we have a number of case studies, uh, those kind of overheads uh, manifest themselves in much more complicated real uh, computational science simulations.